What's up, Pat Project fam? This episode is brought to you by Element Electrolytes, and you know how big of a deal electrolytes are to our performance. A lot of people drink a lot of water because they get dehydrated, whether they're lifting, sweating, doing whatever they're doing, but you actually lose a lot of electrolytes. Your sodium, magnesium, potassium, and Element Electrolytes gives you the perfect blend of sodium, magnesium, potassium in easy to peel off packs. Just put in water, go do your performance. You can take another element later to hydrate, it makes a difference. You feel the difference. So, Andrew, you tell people where they can get some element. Absolutely. So the supplement that you can actually feel, uh, you can head over to drinklmnt.com slash power project. Um, you guys can check out the uh, the free element recharge pack or you can get the value bundle, which is what we recommend because that's what we get. You're going to get four boxes for the price of three. You can get four individual flavors or you can get four of the same ones if you're feeling crazy. Uh, again, that's going to be four boxes for the price of three. No code needed. Just head over to drinklmnt.com slash power project. I'll bump, 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 bump. <laughs> oh man, the nineties were great. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever did you ever have uh what was it called? It was called Jock Jams. Oh yeah. Jock it was jams. like a compilation <clears throat> CD of like all the music they play in stadiums. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. That shit was I mean, you probably still kind of played out, but yeah. Probably still find it on iTunes or something. Like probably, that. hopefully. It was good. Do you? No, you. It's all the hype music. Yeah, it is. It's the final countdown. Wow, <laughs> all that shit. That's amazing. Do you guys ever watch Blues Clues? Oh, of course. I saw that thing yesterday. It made me feel. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, oh man. Russ Swole said the same yeah. thing. He was just like, this hits me in all the feels. It did. <laughs> Lose clues is great. Yeah. So, so Steve, there's this last episode where Steve went to college, mm-hmm. right? He's like, oh, there's my, you know, there's my cousin John or whatever that you guys sucked. He's like, I need a <laughs> notebook. He's like, I need a notebook. And he goes, bing. Yeah. And he goes, <laughs> but, but like he just left and then he was gone. He just, you never saw him again. But then he made like a, a little video oh, yesterday shit. and it was like, it just hit, it, it, it hit the heart. Cause oof. Where has he great. been? He's, he's been doing life, man. No, oh, okay. Been doing life. Yeah, oh, we should play. You, you'll you'll see. You'll see. It, mm. But I think I was like nine or some shit. Blue's Clues was good. Yeah, I totally missed. I I didn't have any reason to watch it. Like I had no kids around me. Yeah, I was yeah, too yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of it. I've yeah. seen too much of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course you have. <laughs> there was uh, one show that I actually liked though. It was that my kids used to watch. Um, damn, I'm having a hard time remembering the Barney because Barney was my shit. <laughs> Like, no, this is the one I told you guys about this one before, but it had like it has like fitness in it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and it had a guy the- named Sporticus in it, and he was like, <laughs> I was he's like it up kicking too. everyone's ass. He was he was all in shape and everything. You told us about this one, yeah. You, we pulled up a clip. It was pretty great. It's hilarious. Yeah, looking. yeah, yeah. Wow, what's what it from? It's like a a, a fantasy land a, a, a fitness if you were tripping I'm hard. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so our our, That's our, what it looks like. our guest is good to go, but I really want to find out what this is from. Sporticus. Robbie like, Rotten. Uh, oh yeah, Robbie uh, Rotten. What is it from? Robbie Rotten tried to make you eat candy and shit. Mystery Ice cream pizza. Pr- nope. Iceland. Cre- ah, dude. Wow. Google sucks right now. Here it is. Lazy Town. Lazy Town. Yeah, is that Lazy what it was. Town. Okay. I've never heard of it. And the whole town is set up to like try to make people make, make all the kids in it lazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, and, and then there's Sporticus a superhero, like, Sporticus. He comes to the rescue. Yeah, Dude, that's, it's that's like uh, it's like it's like idiocracy. It's it's showing us the future. <laughs> right. All right. Let's get let's get the doctor up in here. Mm-hmm. Oh. Shoot, day two, baby. Oh my god! <laughs> Amazing. You are on the hot streak, and we can't Whoa. yell. <laughs> <laughs> calm down first. Yeah. There he is. All right. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Let's have you pronounce uh, your name for us so we don't butcher it too bad. <laughs> uh, you can say Dr. Madahi. I think that's the simplest way. Dr. Madahi. Or Dr. Kuroshi, Madahi. I think. There we go. Yeah, Dr. Madahi is easy. There we go. Great to have you on the show today. Really appreciate your time. Uh, let's kind of dive in. Um, Absolutely. We've, We've, uh, you know, we have a lot of um, fans that are lifters, you know, power lifters, bodybuilders, things like that. People who've kind of built their body up to be bigger than what their body's used to. And then therefore a lot of people end up running into, or at least we think that it has to do with being bigger. I don't even really know. Maybe you'll help uh, correct us on this. Uh, But people run into a lot of sleep problems. They run into like sleep apnea. 
um, in your uh, in your career uh, as a dentist, um, how have you been able to help, or what are what's some of your knowledge in terms of being able to help mitigate something like sleep apnea? Yeah, I think uh, first of all, I think sleep apnea is something that people started to pay attention to in the past 10, 15 years, more than ever before. And uh, some of the understanding of it comes from the fact that what is blocking the person actually being able to breathe. So we want to uh, break that down a bit and then get into it. So number one thing that I always look for is their, can they breathe through their nose? So so many people, so many of my patients, the number one thing is that they have a deviated septum mm. or they have a lot of allergies. And this allergy problem doesn't let them actually breathe through their nose. And if they're not breathing through their nose, nitric oxide is not being produced. And then the oxygen and the nutrients that's supposed to go to the brain is not going. So that's the number one thing that I start with. If they have allergies, part of the problem is that there are allergies and people have allergies and then taking a lot of medications for the allergy itself. The medications that you take for the allergy causes dry mouth inside your mouth, which causes uncontrolled cavities. So we have to always look at the linkage between all of the different things that are happening in terms of one with the other with the other. So if there are on allergy med medications, I check for dry mouth, I check for uncontrolled cavities, and drinking water actually makes the situation worse. And they say, why? How is that possible? I drink water all day. I said, because the problem is lack of saliva. Mm -hmm. Saliva is what you need, not water. Saliva has things in it which has, is a natural antibiotic. It fights cavities inside your mouth. So if you have little saliva and you're drinking a lot of water, you're diluting the saliva you actually have in your mouth. So the key is how do we increase the saliva rather than keep your mouth moist? Moist mouth does not mean you don't have dry mouth. A mouth that has saliva means that you don't have dry mouth. So there are mouthwashes that produces makes you have more saliva. Those are the kind of things that we have to be engaged in. And it's not only allergy medications. There's 450 different medications that causes dry mouth. So we have to be very careful. All people that are on psychiatric medications, such as antidepressants, anti-anxiety, all of these things causes dry mouth as well. So then we get into what's happening in the mouth. People that are clenchers and grinders also, over time, what it happens is that the lower jaw first starts to crowd. And this crowding of the lower front teeth decreases the space within the mouth. And the decreasing of this space means there's not enough room for the tongue. As a result, the tongue starts to block the airway and you get sleep apnea. So, Looking at the arch form inside their mouth and making sure there is, there is enough of an arch for the tongue to actually sit in there would be another area that we have to be cognizant over. So what, what can be done? So if there's not really enough space, one is orthodontic treatment to expand the arch. But one of the other things is that how can we bring the lower jaw forward while they're sleeping as a result of bringing the lower jaw forward, you have enough room for the tongue to come forward and it no longer blocks the airway and people are able to sleep better. So these are some of the aspects that we look into in terms of figuring out what's going on with the dry mouth. So when I'm talking to athletes, I always, first of all, I look at their teeth, I look at wear marks, and I look at the jaw muscles. If the, the jaw muscles are very much developed, my worry is while they're doing weightlifting, they're clenching a lot. And this clenching, 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 clenching is also impacting the movement of the teeth and could cause 
less space in the future. So I always tell them when they are doing any type of a lifting exercises or during the gym to wear a night guard that protects the teeth from moving and protects uh, the jaw from putting so much pressure on the teeth themselves. So this is one aspect. And then the other aspect is definitely um, what I had talked about is the not a deviated septum and they can actually breathe correctly through their nose. You know, I'm curious real quick, you mentioned allergies and allergies is something that, I mean, I never really thought too much about. Um, Cause I know when I was younger, I didn't really have much allergies, but when I became an adult, it's like it, it would happen more often. And what I would, what I usually do, and it usually ends up working, but it's a suffering for about two weeks is I get a lot of work done outside. So if I have allergies, I will just sit out there and it'll just slowly just go away in a period of a week and a half or two weeks. But what are some ways that if people always get bad allergies during allergy season, do they just need to resort to taking allergy medication? Or is there a way to get, you know, is there a way to mitigate that from happening or just, you know, get rid of it altogether? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of allergies, I want to talk about two forms of allergies. The one that you were talking about is we work outside and you get allergies. There's a seasonal types of things that could be happening. Mm -hmm. So one is seasonal. And then the other kind that's becoming much more prevalent is people are having allergies all year round. And we want to talk about both of them separately and the causes behind it. So it's an interesting point you just brought up. It says, when I have allergies, I just go sit out there. And over time, I feel like the allergies goes away. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to desensitize your, the reaction of your body to the allergens that are in the air. So it's a desensitization type of a thing. So if you go to an allergist and say, I have allergies, what they do, they, uh, they do allergy tests. A lot of them is just you go on your back, you sit, and they do scratches of things on your back, and they find out what are you allergic to. And then once they find out what you're allergic to, they say, okay, we're going to give you low doses of that allergens over time until you become desensitized to it. So if you truly want to get rid of it and you don't want to be dependent upon the um, allergic medication and allergy medication, that's one of the things you can do, get desensitization. The second part, I think, which gets uh, missed the most is food allergies. Now, where are these food allergies coming is because to some degree, the water and the food system is contaminated. And when we're talking about these contaminations is that um, because we use pesticides, because we use a lot of chemicals in uh, some of the processed food that we eat, all of these things start to create allergies within your body that is very insidious. You're not well aware of it. You don't know what's happening to you. But all I can tell you is you can't breathe as well as you used to breathe, right? So why is it as we go along in life, we're starting to have some of these things? It could be food allergies. So doing a panel to really find out what are some of these food allergies is what I'm recommending the most because that gets missed the most because people don't think there's anything wrong with what they're eating. But over time, that food source has become contaminated and there's much, many more chemicals and uh, they're being processed even further. So that's why bread, rice, gluten, and you're talking about gluten intolerance, that has become in the forefront um, in the past 20 years, whereas there are many countries that actually live on rice and bread and there's no problems. Mm -hmm. Where did this gluten sensitivity come from is there is a contamination within the source. Yeah, it seems like a lot of it ends up having to do with uh, kind of how we digest stuff. But the first place where you start to digest stuff is uh, through your saliva and through your teeth, right? Absolutely. That's the first point. That's the first point. Entry point to the entire body. And so people that are really into, that are athletes, that are thinking about fitness, they really have to make sure whatever is going on in their mouth is not impacting the rest of the body. So if you look at the research in the past 20 years, there's a linkage between gum disease, with heart disease, with um, diabetes, 
with early term uh, pregnancies that uh, there's premature babies. Um, there is some things that are going on with the lung, some things that are going on with Alzheimer. There's a lot of linkages that are going on, right? And the question is to why? Why is the mouth such an important aspect in terms of what is going on inside your body? So many people think when they eat something and they swallow it is the way that the food and nutrients get absorbed into your body. It's not true. When you are, food is in your mouth, through the tissues of your mouth, there is absorption of the food and nutrients and toxins into your bloodstream. How can I prove this? Very easily. There's two things. One is somebody who's having a heart attack. The um, physician says, if put two nitroglycerin pill under your tongue, not swallow it, just put it under your tongue. And what happens as a result of taking the nitroglycerin pill, putting it under your tongue, there's a vasodilation, the arteries open up, and that whole feeling that the chest is being tightened starts to go away because the rate of absorption is much faster under your tongue because it's well vascularized than swallowing something. We did a study that we were in. I also have a company called Lumino that has different oral care products. And one of the things that we're very proud of is this is a sort of a certified non toxic products. But what does that mean? Um, so we did a study with um, our mouthwash, which is colorless. And as you have seen, all the mouthwashes on the market have some sort of a coloring in it. So I could never understand if we want white teeth, why would we want to rinse with green, blue, yellow, purple mouthwashes, number one. Number two, why would we want to put these toxic colorings in our mouthwash? And the explanation has always been that you don't swallow it, you rinse and you spit. So we did a study that we took a group of people that rinsed their mouth with Listerine and then a group of people that uh, rinsed their mouth with our mouthwash, 60-second rinse, and then they spit it out. We measured the amount of alcohol because there's, first of all, alcohol in the mouthwashes. We don't have any alcohol, but there's alcohol in the mouthwash. Within 60 seconds, that particular type of alcohol showed up in their bloodstream and the dye showed up in their bloodstream. And five minutes later, the amount of dye in the bloodstream had increased already. So we have to understand whatever you get, you put in your mouth is not only what you chew and goes into your stomach. It actually gets absorbed into your body through the tissues of the mouth. The second part is when there is inflammation in the mouth. That means you have bleeding gums. When you're brushing, when you're flossing, there's bleeding. That bleeding, what that means is that the inflammatory markers, toxins and everything can also get into your bloodstream much easier. That is the reason why when you have gum disease, these inflammatory markers, bacteria, viruses, whatever is there can spread out throughout the different organs of the body. As a result, the oral health and whole body health is connected because it pushes out everything everywhere. I'm curious, um, when you were talking about uh, sleep, right, and you have some individuals use a mouthpiece that pushes the jaw forward um, to create a little bit more space, we like I use mouth tape so that I focus on only breathing through my uh, nose when I do sleep, and I notice that like I sleep better. Um, but how do you feel about people using mouth tape to, to just to trigger breathing through the nose? So as long as the, they can use the mouth tape and they can breathe through the nose, perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's one way you can rather easily find out if they can actually breathe through the nose. Uh -huh. They put a mouth tape and they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. That's how fast you can find out that you can actually, you don't have a deviated septum, the allergies are not acting up, and you can actually breathe through your nose. You're going to get the most amount of nitric oxide going to your brain and the rest of your body. So the nitric oxide aspect of it, which is very important because nitric oxide uh, in increases the way that the vasodilation, so there's more oxygen going to your organs, mm -hmm. right? And more nutrients going to your organs. The nitric oxide is being produced by nose breathing and also by um, 
having nitrates, which is the spinach, arugula, lettuce in your mouth, the oral microbiome turning the nitrates into nitric oxide. So the oral microbiome plays a role in production of nitric oxide. That's why antiseptic mouthwashes that kill the um, my oral microbiome are hindering nitric oxide production as well. What do you so, think of some of these? What do you think of some of these devices that people are using to like train their jaw? Um, is there are these things uh, worthwhile to look into? Is someone on the right track, or is this uh, kind of stuff just nonsense? You think? Okay, so training your jaw. So so when you're talking about training of the jaw, there is an aspect to it that we have to look at. Is that is it training your jaw to chew a particular way? It's almost impossible to train your jaw to be a ch- uh, chew a particular way. Is it ma- trying to make sure that the imbalances in terms of your bite are corrected? There are devices that can definitely help in terms of balancing the bite. And the balancing of the bite has definite impact on the spine, on the jaw, on the neck, on the shoulders all the way to your calf muscles. Hmm. There is something to do with the bite and TMJ having an impact on all sorts of uh, things that are going on through, through your body. And then another part of the device is, is the device trying to expand your arch so that there is more room for your tongue to be there so you can actually breathe properly. That one is a little bit more difficult um, to achieve because by the age of 16, the inside the palate, which is the roof of your mouth, there is a suture line that the bones are coming together and formed, and they fuse together. So expanding of the arch is not such an easy thing to do once you get past that age. If you truly wanted to expand the arch, you would have to do some sort of a surgery to open up the suture and then use a device to expand the arch. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot of devices also on the market that are talking about expanding the arch. But part of the problem that I have seen is, yes, they're expanding the arch, but the teeth are coming out of the bone because you are moving the teeth outward, but they're coming out of the bone because the jaw cannot be very much expanded. So you have to be very careful with these type of things. So as an adult, I mean, the only option you really have is pretty much trying to get surgery in that case like you can't really do much in terms of making a change and for individuals that are like there's this thing i've seen called like jaws or size i've seen that type of thing it's like a hard ball that people chew but other people like chew hard gum um to yeah, try failing to, failing gum yeah like like even i chew failing gum sometimes like uh, like i do that also is that not really having a beneficial effect or is it doing anything as an adult so, so there is so as an adult it's very difficult uh, uh, to know exactly the effect of these things because there are not controlled studies yeah. that, are, that are showing these things. So uh, I, I am at heart a scientist and I'm always evaluating data in a controlled setting to see what is going on. So there is an aspect of why our jaws are becoming smaller because we are no longer the carnivorous, the more of plant-based food that we eat, the more softer food that we eat, the less necessary for the jaw, for the teeth for, to grow. As a result, we are seeing over time, historically, when we look at the skulls, historically, the jaws are becoming smaller and smaller, and there's more crowding. And so one of the uh, contributory factors has been that we're not eating hard food the, the food has become softer, right? Uh, and as a result, some of these changes have happened. But as an adult, when you do that, is that going to expand your arch? I haven't seen conclusive evidence of that. Now, I have another question too, because what you were just mentioning there, as far as like the foods and how we're like moving away from eating hard foods, meats, et cetera. Um, I've noticed like, for example, when I look at some of my family in Nigeria, uh, and other countries like that, there seems to be just less prevalence of braces because of the type of food that they eat growing up. Is that a reason why we're seeing so many kids needing to get braces here in the US because they're not forming? Yeah, so I do believe that is a factor. 
uh, but I do also believe that the level of education and going to the dentist has become so prevalent in U.S. that any type of malocclusion, it, the people are getting braces, anything that's not optimal. So I do believe one factor is education and the other factor is also what people eat. Definitely there is evidence because the, the crowding historically wasn't there when you look at the skulls again, and now it's much more prevalent and the crowding is much more prevalent now. So there has to be a shift in the diet. And is that also why, like, for example, individuals wisdom teeth, like, is it normal to have to get wisdom teeth removed? Um, just because again, it's like, I, I know a lot of people who they, they ate certain foods growing up and they have room in like in their mouths. Like I, like I have room in my mouth for my wisdom teeth. And my doctor was trying, like one of my doctors was getting, trying to say, Hey, just get them removed. And then another dentist was like, you have good enough room to keep them. But is it nor like, is that, are you supposed to have to get your wisdom teeth removed or should you? Uh, no, absolutely not. So the only reason why you would need your wisdom teeth removed is there's not enough space or you cannot clean it properly. That's mm. it. If there is enough space, you can clean it properly. There's no reason. So the, the prevalence of people not having enough room in their jaw for the wisdom teeth to come out and they're pushing the other teeth or the, and as they're coming out, crowding everything else has become so much that taking the wisdom teeth out has become a way of uh, relieving that situation. But many people that are actually from African nations, they have, not only they have bigger jaws, they rarely have to take out their wisdom teeth. Even people from India, very rarely you would have to take out their wisdom teeth. Again, their diet is, the, you see more wear on their teeth. That means that their diet has something that's wearing down their teeth, but, but it is not causing it uh, to a point that they would, uh, there's not enough room for it to come out. And, and again, it's also part of the diet is uh, countries that don't have refined sugar in it, in their diet as much. Yeah. The rate of cavity is completely different. You see the rate of cavity in India, even in China, is very different than in the Western countries. Mm -hmm. it's, it's because of the introduction of refined sugar. When you go into Africa, the African nations where there is not much refined sugar, uh, very, 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 very low prevalence of a cavity. There may be gum disease prone, but not to cavities. So again, there's a factor of diet that plays a role in the jaw, size of your jaw, but also in getting uh, cavities and all sorts of things that comes after that as well. You mentioned earlier, uh, you know, chewing of, uh, you know, vegetables and, and plant-based foods and things of that nature. Um, it's my understanding that we need to uh, chew stuff that's hard, you know, in order to uh, even have our teeth uh, kind of form correctly and, and things of that nature. What happens when we chew on hard stuff and, and why is that maybe uh, important? Yeah, so uh, in terms of the development of the teeth, chewing hard stuff, uh, I think it creates a spacing in terms of the jaw development. But in terms of the formation of the teeth, it doesn't have any impact. So the answer to this question actually comes from this thing, that as people get older, they are much more prone to osteoporosis, right? And what the doctors tell the people to do is do weightlifting. Why are they saying do weightlifting when you have osteoporosis? Is because the bone starts to grow and become harder under pressure, okay? So that's a key factor. So when you chew hard food, the bone around the teeth becomes very much stronger. So how I have also seen this play out in my own practice is that people that have lost teeth, we put in an implant, which is a titanium screw inside their jawbone. Initially, during the first year, the bone is, has an 100% become formed. It's forming, it's becoming harder. After two or three years, because there is no nerve on the implant and they're chewing harder food on the implant, the bone around the implant is so much denser than the rest of their mouth. And it's because of that chewing of hard food. Now, 
By the same token, I can tell you, there's more cracking of teeth that's going on with harder food as well. So how do we balance this out, right? So people that eat, eat raw cashews, whole, whole raw cashews, that in itself can, <clears throat> can contribute to a lot of cracking of the teeth. And you say, why? The reason is there's a thickness to this, and this thickness can sometimes cause the chewing and the chewing forces not to be completely perpendicular. And it's an off-angle pressures. And these off-angle pressures can fracture teeth. So you have to be thinking with eating harder food but and not eating such hard food that's also causing a lot of fracturing of the teeth as well. Earlier you had mentioned um, something about TMJ having more effects on the body than just the jaw. What else can TMJ cause? Okay, so TMJ, first of all, let's define it. T stands for temporal mandibular joint. It's the joint itself right at the side of your jaw, right? So there is a meniscus between every joint in your body, and there is a meniscus in in the jaw joint. So when you hear any clicking and popping in your jaw, there could be some damage to this meniscus. Because the jaw joint proximity is next to the ear, and it's right in your head. So the kind of things that you would see is that sometimes people that are complaining of ringing ear, there's a ringing in their ear, it could be due to TMJ. Um, when they wake up in the morning with a headache or they get headaches in the afternoon, could be due to clenching that's causing the temporal mandibular joint to be under pressure. Definitely, the muscle of the masseter muscle is very much affected, temporal muscle, is very much affected. Sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is the neck muscle, is very much. Shoulder, lower back, and calf muscles are all connected to that TMJ issue. So the, the more of a clencher grinder you have been and the longer you have been doing it, you can have these types of tight, tightnesses and also pain in these areas. Okay, so, yeah, I definitely have the, the ringing, the, the headaches, uh, everything you just kind of mentioned, almost everything. Uh, so uh, what can we do to help uh, aid and, in, in, you know, kind of help our TMJ um, issue? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I, I got to tell you, uh, most people that have that they clench or grind their teeth, they don't know. So <laughs> don't expect somebody to know that clenching or grinding their teeth. 80% of those people are actually doing it at night. They're not aware of it. If they're grinders, the person who's sleeping next to them can hear them grinding. With grinding, you hear the noise. With clenching, you hear zero noise because the teeth are just pressing up against each other, right? So, so I kept asking my patients, uh, do you clench or grind? And no, 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 no. It's always a no, right? And I said, I, I'm not asking the right question because they're asleep. How would they know they're clenching their teeth? So I started to ask a different question. Do you ever feel your teeth? And they look at me as if I'm crazy. What do you mean? Do you feel your teeth? Of course I feel my teeth. I said, in actuality, you should never know you have teeth in your mouth because they never touch. When you're chewing food, your teeth don't touch. They never touch. I don't even know I have teeth in my mouth. There's no way you would even know. It is never, there's always a space between the teeth. If you feel your teeth, you're clenching or you're grinding your teeth. So I would say this, and then they would come back. They said, not only I feel myself in the middle of the night, I get up, my teeth are tight together. Mm. In the morning, they're tight together. But during the day, I feel my teeth. So I started to understand, and they started to understand, that this clenching and grinding, it could be happening at all times of the day, but mostly at night. Okay, so now we've established the person is a clencher or a grinder. Now, we have to look at what's causing the clenching and the grinding, okay? Clenching is as a result of stress. I want to repeat that again. Clenching is as a result of stress. Now, again, people will laugh at me. Says, so everybody clenches. Who's not under stress? Mm -hmm. Stress has a very specific definition. The best definition I found is something you cannot do anything about. 
is not the pressure of life. Is what is it you cannot do anything about that you're worried about? You're worried, you're concerned, but you cannot do anything about it. That is where stress is. And if we don't handle that, the clenching doesn't really stop. And they said, they say then to me, if I could handle it, I would have done something and I wouldn't be under stress. So how would I go about this? There is an easy solution. People always think when there is something they cannot do anything about, there's some huge breakthrough has to happen. No. Whatever you can do, no matter how small it is, you do toward handling a problem, it gets rid of the idea of you cannot do anything about it. No matter how small it is, it doesn't matter. So first we have to understand that's what it is. Grinding mainly comes from bad bite. So people that are grinders, they have to have their bite checked. So these two things. Now, what can we do as dentists? Dentists, the only thing that they can do, they can create a device called a night guard that takes the pressure off of the teeth so the damage to the joint number one is no longer there because the thickness of the night guard brings the jaw joint down so that it's not ramming the, into the meniscus every time that they're clenching and grinding. So that night guard is preventing damage to the joint number one because the damage to the joint is irreversible. Even if you grind down your teeth, you can put crowns on your teeth and you can still have normal sized teeth. But the damage to the jaw joint is very, very difficult to, to reverse. Then, uh, so we, do, we want to get rid of the damage to the jaw joint. We want to uh, prevent the damage to the teeth. Does a night guard prevent you from clenching? No. It's just preventing the damage that you're doing to your teeth, to your muscles, and to your joints. Um, so people that are heavy, heavy clenchers, even with the night guard, they're still continuing to have headaches. What the, the next thing we ask them to do is put Botox in the jaw muscle. Why Botox? All we're trying to do is decrease the amount of pressure the person puts on their teeth by 30%. Mm. Because their the muscles have developed so much that the amount of pressure they're putting on their teeth is actually so much that is starting to crack their teeth and they can't even stop it anymore. So just to give you a ballpark, normal people can put 250 pounds per square inch on their back molars and 90 pounds per square inch on their front teeth. Clenchers and grinders can go up to 800 pounds on their back teeth and about 250 pounds on their front teeth. To give, put that even further in perspective, shark is at 900 pounds per square inch when they bite. Mm. So that's how much um, you can develop this muscle and how much you can put pressure on your teeth and crack and destroy your teeth just because you do clenching and grinding. So that's why the element of Botox is become in somewhat of an integral part. I don't do the Botox myself. I send them to a, a, a plastic surgeon or a medical spa, but somebody who understands how to disable some of the jaw muscles to actually decrease the pressure that they're putting on, on their teeth. You were mentioning earlier, it's a lot easier for kids to be able to uh, make changes and uh what what should should be what should be some things we should be aware of with with children that uh, you know maybe tend to be mouth breathers, uh, tend to look at their phone or tablet quite often, end up with kind of a forward head position. Like, what are some of the things you're seeing out of that group? And then, what are some things that can do they could do to uh, be healthier? Yeah, I think the forward head position. The easiest things that you're seeing is that. Uh, Eye issues, headaches, uh, neck aches is the superficial problems that you're seeing with this group of people. Um, and also, uh, one thing that I want to really uh, keep in mind is that sometimes orthodontists are causing sleep apnea. So I want to explain that a, a little bit for a second. Because we talked about braces. We talked about how people go and they get braces as a result of crowding. So there was a school of thought every time there was a crowding, 
uh, you would take four teeth out, four of their bicuspid teeth out, and taking these teeth out and then straightening out the teeth, have enough room to straighten out the teeth. They wouldn't span, spend the time in terms of expansion of the jaw. They would rather take teeth out and then uh, and get rid of the crowding that way. So what happens when you take teeth out and you straighten out the teeth? You are automatically making the jaw, and the, I mean, you're making the arch narrower because now you have one less teeth and then you close all the spaces. The, the arch is narrower. This narrowness of the arch, again, is what we're worried about in terms of tongue space in the future. So we have to be very cognizant in the past 15 years, there is a lot of work toward not taking teeth out while doing orthodontic treatment and finding ways to expand the arch instead of taking teeth out and get rid of the and uh, getting rid of the crowding. So, so some of these things can be man-made as well. So it's, it's done through different procedures, which you later on find out that's causing a lot of problems in the future. I was curious too, um, <laughs> as a kid, one of my really bad habits was I just didn't floss. I'd floss once a month, right? Um, now, you, you, we've talked about gum disease quite a bit earlier and how, how dangerous that can be, but I'm assuming, and I could be totally wrong because I know nothing about this, but as far as flossing is concerned, um, is that what leads to gum disease and, and how really important is that? And are things like the, the water floss thing, the, I think Andrew has one, I have one too, are these things effective in terms of taking care of in between your teeth or is there something else that we should be doing? Yeah, so definitely flossing is a factor because um, where you're losing bone in between your teeth, that means that there is a plaque, which is plaque is the is a bacteria, soft bacterial coverings, films. When it hardens, it becomes calculus, which is a hardened plaque. Mm -hmm. And in between your teeth, that hardened plaque or calculus starts to produce toxins, which are as, uh, like acids, which melt away the bone and the gum which is the gum disease. So removal of that plaque. So without brushing your teeth, you cannot really remove the plaque off of the uh, surfaces of your teeth. So sometimes people ask me, how important is toothpaste? I said, brushing is more important than toothpaste because the, the brush itself is mechanically removing the plaque. What we need is removal of the plaque. Now, the toothpaste becomes important in terms of freshening of the breath and uh, some of the toothpaste that may have fluoride and there's a controversial things about fluoride, but um, the toothpaste is doing something else. It's not really removing the plaque. So number one. Number two, when you're flossing, you're removing the plaque in between your teeth. So any type of removal of plaque that doesn't turn into calculus and then also getting regular cleanings because even the best flossers and people that use toothbrush, their angles of the teeth are very difficult to get to. You need regular cleanings to remove that tartar buildup to make sure that the gums stay healthy. So absolutely, <clears throat> flossing is important. Absolutely, uh, brushing is important. But one other thing I tell you is as important that people are not paying attention to is mouthwash. So your teeth only covers 24% of your mouth. Mouthwash goes and handles all of the tissue and all of the plaque and bacteria and other things that are inside your mouth that could lead to inflammation. So mouthwash can also penetrate many areas that's much more harder to get to. So going back to uh, water flossers, water pick, and all of these things, are they effective? They are. Are they as effective as flossing? They're not. But doing the water floss uh, is better than not doing anything at all. I like what you're saying there because I think, um, I think like when we floss, we're kind of thinking like, oh, like I got something out stuck, you know, something mm -hmm. was stuck between my teeth mm -hmm. and you can visibly see that you got something out of there. <laughs> but what you're saying yeah. is like a lot of times these things probably aren't all that visible, but we should be doing them anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. makes that makes a lot of sense. With with uh, a lot of your study, uh, especially more recently, um, and having an understanding of the microbiome, you know, we hear so much about the gut microbiome, but 
uh, maybe people haven't been t- paying as much attention to uh, what's going on in the mouth. And with your particular mouthwash, thank you for sending that, uh, by the way, um, yours uh, doesn't destroy the microbiome in the mouth, which a lot of other uh, mouthwashes are probably doing because of the alcohol and um, the, the dyes and stuff like that you pointed out earlier. So um, what are some of the discoveries that you've, you've found uh, in switching people over to these things? Because I think there's probably people listening that are like, yeah, I use mouthwash all the time. I don't have any problems, but maybe they do have some underlying issues that they're just not even aware of. Yeah, good. Thank you so much for asking that question. That's such an important question. And that has been, uh, I think, my passion over the past 20 years with the co-founder of my company called Lumina Oil Essentials. Um, my uh, co-founder, Dr. Nozari, uh, was the chairman of the Perio Department, which is the gum surgery department at the uh, University of Southern California, USC, mm-hmm. for 17 years. And he has done extensive research in terms of the world of gum disease, what causes gum disease, what are the easier ways of preventing gum disease. And I want to talk about a particular study, which is a historical study. It was a 10-year study that he did with uh, French scientists in, on homeless kids in Manila. Uh, why they picked homeless kids is that What they found is that there is a certain amount of people that have a particular type of gum disease that bone around the four upper front teeth, four lower front teeth, and the molars starts to go away at a very young age. And it was mainly due to a particular type of bacteria called AA bacteria. Now, AA bacteria infects about one and a half billion people in the world. It's prevalent in the Middle East, it's prevalent in South America, and, uh, and in China, in um, Philippines, and a lot. And, and now it's also growing in the US because we have such a huge immigrant population. The AA bacteria, its characteristic was it was affecting particular bone around particular teeth. What he did with these uh, homeless kids that didn't really have access to toothpaste, mouthwash, floss, any of these type of things, he asked them to rub sea salt on their gum twice a day. And he followed these kids for 10 years. And the result of this study was that even though the AA bacteria was still alive, the gum disease stopped. This is, this is such a breakthrough of a huge magnitude. So we have to start thinking differently about bacteria, viruses, and everything else. And I'm getting to about viruses a little bit later. So what we found out is that, so, so if you ask me what, what, keeps me awake at night, what keeps me going every day is my whole idea is as humans, we had no access to medicine, to anything. We were in the dark age, in the caves, and we survived. What made us survive? What kept us going for thousands of years until we got to where we are? What was it within our body that was protecting us. And what all the research that I have done came to particular area, which is the microbiome. And why microbiome? Because if you look at it, first of all, what is a microbiome? It's a series group of community of microorganisms that are in or around your body that are protecting you against disease and infection. What's in it? There's good bad bacteria, bad bacteria, viruses, fungus, everything is in it. But this microbiome, how it is protecting you is it contains more than 98% of good bacteria. There is such a thing as good bacteria. We cannot be afraid of every single bacteria. We wouldn't actually live without bacteria. And how I can prove that is that your body has 10, 100 trillion bacteria in it to 10 trillion human cells. The ratio of bacteria to human cells is 10 to 1. 
Some people argue it's five to one. Some people argue it's seven to one. And some say it's 10 to one. So you have more bacteria than anything else. So if I were to tell you, you are made out of bacteria. You are actually made out of bacteria. You, meaning every single human being on earth, depends on bacteria to stay alive. Digestion is based on bacteria. Vitamin K production is based on bacteria. Uh, serotonin, uh, dopamine, which are the mood transmitters, the neurotransmitters, is pr production and stimulation of it is dependent on uh, bacteria. We depend on the microbiome for our immunity, for our immunity. The amount of viral load that happens on our skin or in, the, in our mouth is regulated by the microbiome. So where is the microbiome? The microbiome is in your eyes. So how is it protecting you? Mark, I want to ask you, when was the last time you actually had eye infection? Many, many years. Yeah. So we're, we're walking through polluted air every single day. Why don't we get more eye infection? How is that possible? We travel. We do this. We do that. We don't get eye infection. The primary reason there's a microbiome layer on your eyes is protecting your eyes. When was the last time you got an ear infection? The microbiome is inside your ears. You're taking showers. You go in the pool. You go all sorts of places. Yet, you don't get ear infection because the microbiome layer is inside your ear. Why don't we get more respiratory problems? Because we're breathing such polluted air. We go into many areas where there is toxins. Why aren't we getting more respiratory infections? It's because of the microbiome that's coating inside our nose. And then the same thing on our skin. Uh, the skin has full of pores. There's holes all over your body. And these pores can be seen rather easily under the microscope. How is it all of these bacteria and all of these harmful things that we're constantly touching is not going inside of our body? It's because of the microbiome. That's what's protecting us. It's the same thing in our gut and also is the same thing in our mouth. So we put so many things that are full of toxins and contamination in our mouth, yet we don't get sick. What is protecting us is the microbiome inside our mouth that's protecting us against these types of things. So the role of the microbiome is protection. And it is sort of your second immune system. And how it is as your second immune system is very easy. First of all, because we have the microbiome is, is sort of um, all over the mouth, all over the skin, just the mere presence, the amount of real estate it takes, it doesn't allow other bacteria or viruses to get to stick and grow because there's no real estate. So imagine in Manhattan, when it's full of buildings, finding something to build is very, very difficult. But imagine now you go, you destroy Manhattan and all of it is flat. Now you can build anything you want. What do you do when you use antiseptic mouthwash? You destroy the entirety of microwave. When they say it kills 99.9% .9 of the germs, it's talking about the microbiome. It's not talking about something that's harmful in your mouth. There is some things that are harmful, but it's less than 2%. The 98% that are healthy that are getting killed every single day with antiseptic mouthwashes, toothpaste, all sorts of things. Even when you're eating things that have pesticide, pesticide is an antimicrobial. It kills my microbiome, right? Uh, smoking, same thing. Alcohol, drinking alcohol kills. It's constantly killing my, your microbiome is under attack 24 hours a day. So the, one of the first thing I always ask is that how many of you guys take antibiotics every day, every single day of your life? Nobody raises up their hand. They said, no, every single day you're taking antibiotics through the food you eat because it has pesticides, through the mouthwash, toothpaste, all sorts of things, through the alcohol you're drinking. These are all killing bacteria constantly. Your body is under attack. Now you go to washing machine detergents, your dishwasher. Uh, liquids, uh, the cleaning um, 
products in your house, all antimicrobial everywhere, everywhere. We are under attack. And some of these issues of autoimmune disease, all of these things that are coming up more and more and more, if you start to look at it, as we started to kill bacteria, where in, in the 1950s, we came up with antibiotics. In 1960s and 70s, the prevalence of antibiotic started to grow. We see infectious disease going down. At the same time, autoimmune disease started to go up. So the protection started to go away. So our belief is not to kill any bacteria. So this is, I want to explain this to you. This goes against 70 years of dental research. Hmm. 70 years of dental research says, kill the bacteria because the bacteria causes gum disease, causes cavity, causes bad breath. If you want to get rid of gum disease, if you want to take get rid of cavities and you want to take get rid of bad breath, kill the bacteria. Clearly, this doesn't work because we still have cavities, we still have bad breath, and we still have gum disease. Clearly, this does not work. And the other reason why I can tell you it doesn't work is that people think they have gum disease because now they're older is absolutely false. Gum disease is not age-related in any form or fashion. And how we know this is that in order for you to have gum disease, you have to have inflammation first, which is gingivitis, inflammation. There's inflammation, then prolonged inflammation, it goes into the gum disease. We know gingivitis is reversible. Inflammation is reversible. So if the mouthwashes that are saying they're anti-inflammatory, they reduce inflammation and all these things, they were working well, what would happen? They would stop the inflammation. As a result, you wouldn't get gum disease. But the rate of gum disease is going through the roof. More and more people, even at a younger age, are getting gum disease. How are these products helping? The problem is the same problem as smoking, is the same problem as asbestos. The asbestos that was in the wall, people didn't know is causing some sort of a lung cancer. They didn't know. It took them 30 years to find out. People that were smoking never knew that they couldn't correlate uh, smoking to lung disease because there were many people that were not smokers and they were getting lung. It was only through secondhand smoke studies that they found the linkage. And it's the same thing I'm telling you, is that this, this research does not work because when you kill the bacteria, there is certain toxin within the walls of the bad bacteria that gets released. And if you don't kill the bad bacteria, there is certain toxins that are getting released as well. So what do you have to do? If you kill them, you have a problem. If you don't kill them, you have a problem. So the formula that we came up with is we don't kill anybody, number one, but we neutralize the harmful toxins of the bad bacteria. It's the toxins we're after, not the bacteria. If you go after toxins, then the damage will not be there. And that is the idea. The idea is we need products that are non-toxic, and, and a lot of people get very upset when I say this because they believe Colgate and Procter & Gamble and all of these companies are putting out non-toxic mouthwashes. It's absolutely not true. In dental school, we refer to them as chemotherapeutic agents. Whoa. They're chemotherapeutic agents. What does that mean? They kill the bad and the good, but they kill more of the bad than the good. That's all it is. Nobody's arguing these points. And how they can get away with it is that in the short term, they can prove killing and this toxicity does not harm you. As long as short-term studies show there's no harm, you can go on producing these products and putting it out there. But these colorings, these artificial coloring, this alcohol, all of these things, there's some sort of toxicity. These chemicals that are in there, there's absolutely some toxicity there. So, we can produce a non-toxic product, but here's another issue. All the natural products that were, that were made in, in the dental field, they failed the public. They may be safer for you, but they were not effective. So I tell people, you want a safe product, you want a safe mouthwash, 
rinse your mouth with organic apple juice. It's safe. But what does it do? Nothing. Most, most, if not all, of these natural products don't do anything. There's no effectiveness. There's no clinical studies. So far with our company, we've done 54 clinical studies. 54 clinical studies. And we have two more ongoing studies. One, the one that we right now, we finally got, got the approval to do, is the effect of damaging the oral microbiome on the gut microbiome. Nobody has studied any of these type of things. Nobody's caring to see these linkages. But that is exactly what we are into by science proving that the old science has failed us. And it wasn't anybody's fault because they identified what was causing the disease and they said, let's kill it. But that doesn't work. It, does, it clearly does not work. So all of the products that we have from the mouthwash, toothpaste, whitening strips, and everything else is certified non-toxic and is also microbiome safe. We don't kill any bacteria. And we're proud of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the concept. Now, because we don't kill the microbiome, guess what? We we allow the oral microbiome to produce nitric oxide, which for athletes, for people in the fitness world, is so important more oxygen to all organs of the body, more heart health. That's exactly what we want. And the, our latest study we just came up with showed that we have zero impact on the microbiome and we were able to let the nitrates be converting into nitric oxide by use of our mouthwash. Oh, that's sick. It, body is connected. That's the body is connected. Power Project Familia, when's the last time that you got checked under the hood? I'm not talking about under the hood. I'm talking about <laughs> your hormones, oh. like your prolactin, your testosterone, all those things. Well, Merrick Health has your back. All right. We have the Power Project panel that has over 26 different labs to help you understand exactly what's going on. So you can either make sure you're in great health or you can figure out what you need to optimize. But you should also check out Merrick's treatment plans with doctors. They have treatment plans on their website that you could purchase. You'll be able to work one-on-one -on -one with the doctor where they'll tell you what specific tests that you need to get and then give you the specific protocols that you might need to fix said problems. This could potentially be HRT. You could be suffering hair loss. You could be having problems with libido, but a doctor will be able to help you figure out exactly what you need to do. So, Andrew, can you tell the people how to get this? Absolutely. So you guys need to head over to MerrickHealth.com. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com. And um, when it comes time to actually purchase these uh, panels, these labs, you know, after maybe you're going to receive some treatment, when it comes time to actually paying for the labs, use promo code POWERPROJECT15, and that's going to save you 15% off all of your labs. Again, that's at MerrickHealth.com. Links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. Head over there right now. We need more. We cannot ignore it. We need more uh, dentists like yourself because, <laughs> you know, the, the fact that you started to study the whole body is is uh, great and um, it's fantastic because I think, you know, I think that a lot of people would be shocked to to understand the amount of like dental care that you would have to have if you had a really good diet could be significantly less than how much you have to really worry about your teeth, uh, how much dental coverage you even need. I mean, it, it could be minimized quite a bit. It, it, do you kind of agree with that? I mean, we do need to like Absolutely. clean our teeth. And I think even the cavemen were pick, picking at their teeth with different things, uh, you know, for many years, but it's the advent of sugar and a lot of these highly processed foods and us overeating and being unhealthy. Uh, bad breath isn't necessarily just because you're not brushing your teeth or using mouthwash. It's uh, probably coming from you not Systemic. being a healthy person or there's something wrong. There's something going on. Yeah. I even have noticed with myself, if I fast for a really long time, that my breath will start to get bad. It's probably a sign, you know, you're, it's probably a signal from your body like, uh, hey, this is probably not a great idea to go this long without eating. And so it's kind of sending off almost like a, a signal or whatever's going on in your body. But I think it's great that you're, uh, you have researched, um, not just, you know, the teeth or not just how to help somebody, uh, have a, uh, immaculate smile type thing. Right. And, and it's interesting when you were talking about, so the keto diets and then also intermittent fasting and all of these things, one of the things that you always have to be worried about is that, um, one of the products that gets um, produce is the acetone 
acetone ketones that are being produced due to the keto diet that causes bad breath. Mm. Uh, so there are some of these aspects of things that you are doing that is showing that you need some level of carbohydrates. It's mm. not no carbohydrates. The body runs on carbohydrates. So keto diets are very, very effective for people that want to lose weight pretty quickly. But it cannot be a lifelong type of a habit. You have to balance the diet with proper nutrients, but not processed sugar. It's not processed. Carbohydrate is not processed sugar. <laughs> there's a lot of things that there's carbohydrates that you need for energy and everything else, but it's not processed food. So it's a distinction between these types of ideas that makes it uh, you know, uh, so I, I know Ron Pena with, with, with the legendary foods and everything else. You don't need to make pop, uh, pop tarts with so much sugar. There are ways that you can handle some of these things. Yeah. So there are ways and future thinking people with visions are always thinking of better ways to coming out with products and ideas that's relying on your body to process it better and not have it processed in a lab or in a, a, a the factory that would actually disrupt your body in some way. And these are that's what we need. We need to think about the body as a whole body. We can't think about, I'm going to do this for my gut health, but ignore something else. I'm going to do this to lose weight and then forget about that. I'm going to do this for my mouth and then forget about this other thing. They're all interrelated. We are whole. As a whole, we have to look at it as a whole body. Dr. Madaya, I, I don't know if I missed it, but I, I, I may have missed some of it, but I was curious, uh, as far as the uh, mouthwash, antiseptic mouthwash and the stuff that people are using to destroy the whole microbiome in the mouth, what are the long-term negative effects that people should like really understand? This is probably why I don't want to use this for too long. What are the long-term negative effects of using that over time? Yeah, so... So um, one of the easy things, because microbiome has something to do with immunity, mm -hmm. right? So, so there are people that are telling me, listen, I have never had a cavity in my, in my life, and I've been on these products forever, yeah. right? Even if they were not on those products, they would not have a cavity. And I'm going to tell you why. Because their diet, they don't, they don't consume uh, processed sugar, number one. <laughs> or, or they're the type of bacteria that is in their mouth, they don't have very much of a cavity causing bacteria in their mouth. So they wouldn't have had it anyway without any of these products, uh, no matter what. So we're not looking at the outliers. The entirety of the world of science is a bell curve. And the bell curve is forget about this 10%, forget about that 10%. Where is the 80% of the people? And what is it that we're looking for? So one of the things that we're continually studying is the viral load. Now, why is that also important in, in the context of coronavirus? Viral load. So what we are saying is that your microbiome, it fights disease and infection. One way was by taking up the real estate so that the viruses and the bacteria cannot stick and grow. The second thing is that they... The, within the micro, microbiome, there is low numbers of bad bacteria and viruses. It's low that it cannot cause disease, but it lets our immune system get familiar with them and create antibodies to fight them without you ever becoming sick. So one of the things that we are looking at is that why certain people get sick easier is again, looking at this viral load that lives within the mouth and it allows viruses and other bacteria to come in. So people that are constantly getting sick is an, is an issue as to what is causing these type of things. Is there a microbiome that's being destroyed all the time? What is the toxins that are getting in? What are, why are the viruses coming into this body and able to ev evade and invade it so easily? So this is an area. You, you have um, inflammation in your gums, even though you have good oral hygiene habit. Why? Uh, that is another byproduct of constantly killing this bacteria. The saliva is not 100% clear. Why? Because in a healthy mouth with a healthy microbiome, 
the saliva is clear, clear, clear. There's nothing go- going on. We've done uh, spit tests with people, and they they look at this. It has a darkish uh, or foggyish look to it than clear uh, um, saliva. Uh, other things, the tissue looks really clean. The uh, the tongue has no whitish spots on it. What is the whitish spot coming from? Killing the microbiome also creates fungal and also sticking of the, those type of things within the tongue. So there's a lot of things within the mouth that you can see when you have healthy microbiome. So we know that the, uh, you know, some of the toothpastes out there and some of the mouthwashes aren't great. What are some other things we should be keeping our eyes on? Like, what about like, uh, I don't know, gum or... Um, artificial sweeteners. Yeah, things that have artificial sweeteners or even maybe not artificial sweeteners, maybe even like stevia, monk fruit, like any of these kinds of things. You know, uh, I'm not against artificial sweeteners. I, I would tell you that <clears throat> there's a particular... Uh, uh, sweetener that we have in our product, which is xylitol. So I, I want to talk about xylitol for a second. Xylitol is the only sugar substitute or alcohol sugar that we have found that the cavity-causing bacteria cannot process. They cannot process it. As a result, they starve and they cannot grow. So in Denmark, in Netherlands, when uh, there is pregnant women, they're asked to take xylitol pills in order to decrease the chances of them getting cavities um, with their teeth. Now, there is there are people saying, oh my God, xylitol, xylitol is horrible. What they're talking about, xylitol being horrible, is when you consume more than 20 milligrams of xylitol per day, you get diarrhea, you get stomachache. So you always have to understand anything that's good, there is also there's a bad side to it. Fire warms you up, burns down your house. Water keeps you hydrated. You can drown in it. So it doesn't mean that there's no product singly that's good all, all the way around. So again, not to consume it too much, but this is the one that we are using. So xylitol, I'm very much for. Other ones, I think long-term studies are needed. So when they came out with saccharin, it, was, it took years of finding out that what was wrong with saccharin, right? All of these things equal this, that. So some of these sugars that are coming out, it seems that's good, but only long-term studies will truly show you. So in the world of toxicity, in the world of uh, experiments with these type of things, we have quite a bit of short-term studies that shows no harm. But as we are understanding that the 30-year mark, 20-year mark, 10-year mark is truly what shows what's happening with some of these products long-term and their effects. So you always have to be mindful of that. Um, um, I want to know too, because uh, Lumino, is it Lumino or? Yeah, L- Lumino is the actual uh, French pronunciation. Oh. So Lumino that's what people mainly know in U.S., but yeah. Lumenu is the actual uh, French pronunciation. Lumenu. Very well done. Lumenu. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to say. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> but I was actually, I wanted to know, um, as far as like teeth whitening, uh, because, yeah. you know, every time I get my teeth cleaned, which I, I need to go get that done again pretty soon, um, you know, the, the doctor's like, ooh, you got some coffee stains and, you know, whatever. Just stop drinking coffee. And I'm like, no, right? Uh, what can we do because if we love coffee? coffee or if we love green tea because sometimes these things can cause some people end up getting yellowing of the teeth um like i think luminu has whitening strips and they have a, a whitening thing you can put in your mouth and i i tried that out i was like whoa this is cool uh, but how does yeah. uh what is different from the the ones within that product line versus like the crest whitening strips and the other stuff that you see on the market great that's a great question uh so the third revolutionary aspect of the company is the widening product. And the widening products, the simplest thing I can tell you is uh, peroxide-free. Peroxide-free. And what does that mean? Peroxide-free means that there is no tooth sensitivity and no gum irritation. So from the FDA aspect and, and and American Dental Association aspect, peroxide is the only known 
uh, sort of um, ingredient that you can use to whiten your teeth, right? That is what is approved by them. <clears throat> but the problem is when you use peroxide, to some degree, you're etching uh, your teeth. You are removing layers of enamel. So if you use it too much, what you're going to do is that you're going to um, cause a lot of enamel damage. And also, you're going to have sensitive teeth and sensitive gum. So I've been a dentist now 36 years. And I'm a cosmetic dentist in Beverly Hills. So imagine everybody wants white teeth. So 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when we would do whitening, it would last the whole year. And we would not ever be worried about it. A year. Today, when we use any type of whitening in our office, it maybe lasts a month or two. Whoa. Why? What's changed? And why is there so much sensitivity? So in, in a book that I wrote, I've written th three books, but uh, in a book, the second book that I wrote is called The Hidden Epidemics. One of the things that I talked about is the teeth sensitivity. Why did teeth sensitivity shot up through the roof? And also, how did Sensodyne became the number two best-selling toothpaste in the United States? And it is all has to do with Starbucks, actually. So once Starbucks started to become popular and there were a Starbucks around every corner, the consumption of, of coffee also went through the roof. And then Starbucks was the beginning, but then certain healthy habits started to come in. Green tea. Green tea actually makes your teeth gray. Um, but green tea is, some, is, is excellent for you and it's a very healthy habit, but people started to drink green tea. And then there were a study out of Bordeaux, interestingly enough, that showed that red wine is good for your heart, right? But the consumption of red wine went up as a result. Uh, and you can look at these charts. It's really staggering rise. And then we got even further into uh, healthy habits. Juicing became very important. And then the green juices and the red juices. And then we got into the antioxidant kick. And we got into blueberries and blackberries. So all of these things that we're talking about right now are all they cause staining. And we are being inundated by it. And also we, we drink them, we use them. It's also something that's healthy. But what it did was the tremendous amount of staining liquids and also foods, soy sauce, barbecue sauce, tomato sauce, everything has some sort of a staining. So it became to such a point that even when you would do whitening, it wouldn't last. So people started to do more and more whitening. And then they used whitening toothpaste that had peroxide. They did whitening mouthwash that had peroxide. They did whitening strips that had peroxide. And then they would do whitening at the dental office that has peroxide. So all around, there's peroxide that's happening. So it gets to a point that the teeth are always sensitive. Now, if you do clenching and grinding, your teeth can also be sensitive. But 95%, it has nothing to do with that. It's mainly because of these types of activities that are going on. So I started to look as to what do we do? Because there are certain patients that couldn't even get any more whitening because their teeth were too sensitive. So I started to look at other ways of whitening their teeth because I believe is what can be used on a daily basis. So the whitening products that are on the market in terms of toothpaste and mouthwash is not for daily use, even though it's a toothpaste and people are using it. But truly it isn't because it will cause enamel damage or sensitivity over time. So that cannot be a daily use product. So I started to look at and research ingredients that could cause whitening, but that can be used on a daily basis. And what I came up with is a coconut oil, sage oil, lemon peel oil combinations with all in the Dead Sea salt we were using. And we were able to create a line of uh, whitening products that use no peroxide. And we have head-to-head -head studies that we whiten as well as crest 3D whitening strips without the peroxide. Mm -hmm. And so the mouthwash and toothpaste, because we drink coffee and eat all of these things, we need something that we're using on a daily basis to keeping the stains off of our teeth. So the toothpaste and the mouthwash was important. And also the whitening strips that you would use once in a while that we would cover your mouth and then the contact between 
these products again against the teeth was another way that you could whiten the teeth within half hour. And we do have no, uh, no sensitivity. Even I have had patients that have used our whitening strips maybe 60 days in a row. No, and people that were sensitive. Wow. And they couldn't use whitening. And they had no sensitivity. Our latest product is a stain repellent whitening pen. And I think this is the most futuristic idea and product that I've ever come up with. And the reason for it is this. I would never tell you to stop drinking coffee because if you drink, so there are people that they try to stay, uh, not to drink coffee and they're dragging all day. They're tired. They get headaches. They don't function as well, right? So I'm not there to tell you. And I think there's a lot of benefits to coffee anyway. Uh, personally, I do believe that. It's an antioxidant. So coffee, not drinking coffee is not the way to go. Is what do we do to combat the staining effects of coffee? I can't tell you not to drink green tea. Green tea is great. But how do we combat it? So what it is that you get the stain repellent, which is a dual action, stain repellent whitening. If you want a stain repellent, you put two coats of the stain repellent on your teeth. Um, it's a brush on a pen. Mm -hmm. You wait 60 seconds. And you can drink uh, coffee, tea, red wine, uh, green juice, anything for two to four hours without any staining of your teeth. We've done, again, clinical studies that has proven this. And we soak teeth into the coffee, extract the teeth into coffee. We put these coats on it and we've seen it. These are university, independent university-based studies that are on our website that shows that we have this stain repellent activity. Now, if you want it, uh, you want it as a whitening pen, you would do the same thing. You put two coats on your teeth and you wait for, you don't eat or drink for 30 minutes. You have the whitening effect. Best way to use the product, I think, is you put the, you put a pen next to your coffee machine. And then uh, with most of my women friends, put one in the, in your purse, wherever you go, you want to drink uh, red wine, no problem. Put it on before you drink coffee, you put it on. But if you want the whitening effect before you go to sleep, after you floss, uh, brush, and you use the mouthwash, you put the whitening pen on your teeth and you go to sleep. It's certified non-toxic, doesn't do anything, your teeth are white. Question I've had in my head forever, which I don't think you'll have an answer for, but I'm going to say it anyway. Try me, Mark. It's uh, Try me. <laughs> pretty ludicrous. But why do you think we lose our teeth at such an early age? And how come we don't get like a third set of teeth to come in? <laughs> Wouldn't that be super convenient? Then we could eat whatever we want and not have to worry about it as much. <laughs> I guess so, it might so, put you out of a job though too, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I want to ask you, why do you think that we actually lose our teeth in a, in a young age? Why, why, would the, why should we use our teeth at a young age? What yeah, would be the reasoning for it? So the only reasoning you could, have, you could lose your teeth is that there's severe cavity that you, can, you cannot save it. That means that you had not gone to a dentist. You didn't catch the cavity. Uh, soon enough, right? But the main reason has been all along is gum disease. You don't have the bone, the teeth become loose, you lose it. So that's the, these are the two main reasons. No, so, I just mean like from, even, I just mean like when you lose your teeth when you're a kid is what uh, I'm okay, referring, so, I'm re more referring okay, to that, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. So losing those teeth is because the jaw has not developed enough to have the correct size teeth in your mouth. Mm. So the jaw has to develop for the correct size teeth to come in. That's the reason. It's a mainly the reason is the smallness of the jaw. And can no we room. grow? Can can we grow teeth? Are we there yet? <laughs> no, we we're not there yet. And there's a lot of thinking that we're going to do that through stem cells and everything else. Whoa. Some of those ideas are not as exciting uh, as once we thought. Uh, so we haven't really made that much breakthrough. In that area, there, there's more breakthrough in growing a liver, growing a heart, mm. growing an organ than has been in growing a teeth. Uh, but it is definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Very cool. In your book, you have uh, a lot of recommendations for a uh, particular diet, um, you even have like recipes and things like that. Uh, what style of diet do you follow and what do you do for exercise? Okay, so partic particularly, um, so the, the book is called The Toxic Overload, and we talk about the uh, oral health, whole body health. That's the whole connection. It's a 
this is my third book. Um, again, an- another Amazon bestseller thing. But the main thing that I started uh, to talk about it within the book is that how do we recover our microbiome? This is the whole thing that I'm after, right? And and I'm not one to believe that you have to be 100% plant-based or 100% carnivore to actually be healthy. Um, because I, again, go back to um, what I have seen historically. There are regions in the world historically where they were not plant-based and they had uh, great health. And there are... Um, Uh, parts of the world where they were plant-based and they were very healthy. So being healthy doesn't mean you're only plant-based or meat-based. That's not the thing. What you're consuming is very important. So the pesticides is what's destroying it. Processed food is what's destroying it. If uh, before we didn't have to worry about organic meat because meat was organic, it didn't have hormones, it didn't have antibiotics. So these are the kind of things that we have to get away from to actually preserve the microbiome. So grass-fed meat, I'm all for. Um, I don't particularly like uh, red meat. I've never liked red meat, even as a kid. I eat a lot of chicken, a lot of fish. These are the things I like. I like vegetables and salads and everything. I'm not a plant-based person. I'm not a vegetarian. Um, In terms of exercise, I hate the gym. I hate exercising in the gym because I'm a very competitive person. I love competitive sports. All my life, I was on a basketball team, volleyball team, soccer team. So what I do, I play tennis uh, twice a week, each time two hours. And it's not for my health, it's for competition. And then I do work out with a trainer twice a week anyway, because I was losing my flexibility. So again, as a scientist, you're looking as to not what is hard or not hard, what will produce the results you're looking for. And what I was looking for, I saw because over time, your muscles are less flexible, your, your ligaments are less flexible, what do I have to do? And the stretching exercises, I'm working with a trainer to get my muscles more um, uh, comfortable in terms of flexibility was a key in terms of a long, healthy life. Long, healthy life. So one of the things I can tell you, modern science is not the primary factor to longevity. That's not what's causing longevity. What causes longevity is two things, two factors, historically. Clean water, hygiene is the two factors to longevity. Modern science has come and has added things to it. But if you want to increase longevity, these are the two main factors you have to be after. And in every African nation, even villages that some of them I have helped in terms of bringing in hygiene into, what we have to do is get clean water into the village and teach them hygiene. And we've seen that their life expectancy all of a sudden changed. So we want to stay with the basics. And we used to be uh, people that used to walk a lot. So historically, we walked a lot. We went hunting. That's how we stayed healthy. We don't walk. We're not active. Lack of activity alone makes you gain weight. Gaining weight is the primary cause behind diabetes, heart disease, all sorts of other things that are happening. So lack of activities. You've got to exercise. We're saying exercise, whereas before, people weren't thinking about exercising. They were walking miles and miles and miles uh, trying to get some food to bring to the table. So these are the concepts that has been there throughout history that we have to be thinking with at all times. So on this show, like we, we really like to focus on just habits uh, and, and that's the biggest deal. So I want to know with everything that we've talked about, what are the daily habits that an individual needs to have as far as taking care of their teeth? And when I say habits, I mean like how many times a day should they use their mouthwash, brush their teeth, floss, maybe even take teeth whitening. What would you say are the habits that they should have so that they don't need to have as many dental visits as most people do end up having? Yeah, so, so my belief is that get rid of anything that's antiseptics, antibacterial. Mm-hmm. Anything, anything. Uh, this doesn't mean in your mouth. I'm against hand sanitizers that you're using inside your home. 
hundred percent. I'm hundred percent against it. Hand sanitizers are good when you do not have access to soap and water. If you have access to soap and water, water, and you use hand sanitizers, you destroy the microbiome on your hand. Okay, mm-hmm. so. We are, due to COVID, we will see other issues in the future because we're using so much hand sanitizers constantly, okay? Uh, uh, wipe down the counters of your kitchen with soap and water. That's what you need. Don't use all of these antibacterial things on the surfaces of your skin. You touch that surface, you destroy the microbiome, you touch your mouth, you destroy the microbiome in your you touch your eyes, you destroy the microbiome in your eyes. So I am against antimicrobial products only when you have access to water and soap. If you don't, you definitely need it. In hospital settings, you definitely need it. So again, our, the sanity comes from differentiation and understanding why it's okay in one place, not okay in the other place. So. Go look at every cleaning product in your house. Get rid of anything that's antimicrobial. Washing machine detergents, uh, dishwasher detergents. Get rid of it. We're destroying our microbiome in a hundred ways. We can possibly get rid of uh, our microbiome through use of these products. The other one is let's get, um, in terms of food, have things that are uh, no pesticides. So again, it's not... The organic food is not what I'm after, is, is food that doesn't have pesticides and because there can be organic, but there's issues with it as well. But having products without antibiotic, without hormones, uh, uh, without pesticides is a key. And you can implement these things one thing at a time. You can just focus on finding the right uh, detergent. One of the places that I would tell you that has uh, really goes into these things is made safe. So we made safe. Oh my God, these people are fanatics. What we had to go through to get even a made safe seal. It was un- unbelievable because we had to also prove we do not harm the marine life, marine life. So guess what? The antiseptic mouthwash you use, not only it destroys your microbiome, it goes down the drain, it goes into the ocean and destroys things in the ocean as well. So it is constantly looking at this whole thing as a whole circular manner. But in terms of your mouth, don't use anything that's antiseptic. Proper, uh, use toothpaste with your uh, brushing, but use a soft toothbrush. That's more important than the toothpaste. And brush properly. So I also, we made a, a toothbrush and people say, why did you make a toothbrush? It's because I saw so much damage from wrong toothbrush, wrong bristles, and electric improper use of electric toothbrushes. Uh-oh. Because there's 30% more damage using an electric toothbrush improperly on your gums than mechanical toothbrushes. You have to let the toothbrush do the work. If you don't use it properly, you're going to destroy your gum. So. The mouth, the toothbrush that I use, the bristles are out of castor oil. They're very, very flexible. They're soft, but yet they clean your teeth. And the surface is flat. So one of the things that I've have I've seen in the world of toothbrushes is a Nike phenomena. Nike phenomena is blue, red, purple, all the brushes going in all sorts of different direction. No, the research shows flat surface toothbrush cleans your teeth better than any other these angulations and these colors and thicknesses. This is not, this is not what research has shown. This is a marketing ploy. This is a, a sort of a gimmick. So the flat surface toothbrushes, um, again, uh, using a flexible uh, uh, bristles key to not destroying your, your gums and getting rid of. So people think, if they don't scrub their teeth, they have not cleaned their teeth. The scrubbing will result in damage to your gums. So using a proper toothbrush, brushing at least twice a day, particularly in the morning, particularly in the morning after, and particularly also people that don't uh, brush their teeth before they go to sleep, 
all sorts of food and bacteria starts to grow very rapidly. During COVID, uh, I have seen people, they're drinking alcohol more mm. and they're not brushing their teeth before they go to sleep. The rate of cavities in young people has really gone up where these people never had cavities. I see that in my practice. And the one thing I ask them, do you brush your teeth before you go to sleep? Ah, I was at home, I was drinking, I forgot, I fell asleep, I passed out this, that, and everything else. But now I see cavities. So cavity, uh, brushing your teeth right before you go to sleep. So that many hours, the bacteria cannot grow in your mouth. And then the other things uh, I can tell you is mouthwash twice a day is key, mm. morning and night. And then also finding out if you do have dry mouth, because dry mouth alone can destroy all your teeth. It can cause cavities, you can, and, and, and it's destroying your teeth. And you tell me you have good oral hygiene habit and you don't consume sugar, but yet you get cavities all the time. Dry mouth could be a culprit. Awesome, doctor. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Where can people find you? Where can they find your books and your products? Okay, so my products is Lumino.com. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, oralcentrals.com. Uh, Lumino is the product line. Uh, we're on Amazon. We're in Walgreens. We're at Rite Aid. We're in Whole Foods, um, Sprouts, a lot of things. So the store locator on our website, oralcentrals.com, would be the best. The books are also on Amazon. Um, the one, the Toxic Overload, which is the latest one. And the one before that, which is the um, <clears throat> the hidden epidemics showing all the different things that are going on within society, such as dry mouth and sensitivity, where it came from and what it's doing to the population is very important. And, and I, again, store locator would be the best where they can purchase it at a retail level. I have one quick last question, Dr. Madai. You mentioned using electric toothbrushes wrong. Um, if we do use an electric toothbrush, is it just that we just need to make sure it doesn't touch our gums or is there something else? So you let the toothbrush do the work. You go mm -hmm. tooth by tooth, and it will do a great job. So the electric toothbrush is supposed to do the work, okay? not you going back and forth. You're not mechanically using an electric toothbrush. Got it. If you use an electric toothbrush, there's an advantage over it. having an electric toothbrush over a mechanical. If you use it wrong, it's 30% more damage. Okay. Got it. Thank you, sir. Have a great rest of your day. You're Take welcome. care. You too. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Cool. See, I told you guys you got to be careful what you're sticking in your mouth all the time. Not but but time. isn't mm, yeah? I'm gonna stop there. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I want my mom to see this episode. So. Nice. So real quick for anyone that is interested, so it's oralessentials.com, and um, they kind of wanted to do something since we had Doctor Madahi oh, Madahi Madahi on the on the podcast. So you guys can head over to oralessentials.com and use promo code Power for fifteen percent off your order, which Ooh. I thought was pretty freaking cool. Wow. And uh, yeah, I'll link everything um, down in the description as well as podcast podcast show notes and then probably link his books if you guys want to um, follow up there as well it'd be cool if they could get some studies done on uh you know doing things like you know using phalium gum and mewing and different things that people are trying to do to uh to help kind of correct certain things but yeah as he pointed wow. out he wasn't really aware of like any uh studies that were that have been done mm -hmm. but um I still chew gum like that here and there, and I I find it pretty productive. I just kind of also think, why not? Like, just I do it on my walks, and uh, it all, it also helps you with uh, fidgeting, right? It helps you burn more calories, so why not? Why not keep moving? Mm -hmm. I've heard things like uh, I've looked at some of that you know that jawsercise stuff. I heard that that can actually be pretty dangerous. But the things like phalium gum, mm -hmm. I, I still I've used been using that for like two and a half three years. I've seen it actually be pr pretty beneficial. So it, it's it's not worth hurting to try it out. I can't speak today, yo. That's okay. I can't speak today. But um, this was a great episode. This was a really cool episode because like, first off, mom, because you're going to see this episode, thank you, because I didn't have a cavity ever because she barely ever let me eat processed foods as much as I wanted to. And she'd beat your, beat your ass if you didn't uh, mm -hmm. brush yep. your teeth. Exactly. <laughs> and also she put me in sports. That's a big thing for kids. Yeah. Cause you know, if, if kids aren't able to, if they don't do a lot of activity, they're breathing through their mouth when they sleep. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, lack mm -hmm. of saliva in the mouth can lead to cavities. I didn't have that issue because I played sports as a kid. So 
to get your kids in fitness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get your kids moving and just having healthy habits in general. It's mm-hmm. really, really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited that, I mean, you know, uh, my wife, Stephanie, had showed me oralessentials.com before we even knew we were going to have him on. And like, I, I just didn't know what I was looking at. And then now after speaking to him, I just like text him like, yeah, babe, good job. Like this, like you found a really good product. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool to to see that you know, when, when they shipped out the, um, the kits to us and she's like, Oh my God, that's the one that I was telling you about. And I'm yeah. like, Oh, that's right. My memory sucks. But you know, so I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to dive in. And then, you know, like what he was talking about, like the, um, antiseptic and, uh, micro antimicro, that, that, antimicrobial. that word, uh, with my son, we were already trying to get rid of a lot of these products, like the chemicals and stuff out of the house. Nice. Like we use, uh, it's called the Norwex. They're just like, I don't even know what they do, but like they clean everything up and you don't need any like crazy chemicals. And so, yeah, it's just cool. Like when you're kind of heading one direction and then you have somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about and they're like, yeah, that's where you should be going. And so it's, you know, it's just reassuring, you know, it's cool. It makes me feel good. But then at the, uh, on the other side of it, now that we do know more about this shit, it also will make me like a, not a hypochondriac, but like overreacting to everything my son does now. <laughs> you know, it's like the, the more, you know, the more you don't know or whatever, however that saying goes. But like the more that I know now, the more it's like, oh shit, like, oh, that's going to ruin your teeth or that's going to don't wash your hands with that. Wash your with, you know, like, so there's a little bit of that that's kind of brewing in my head as well. But I guess it's better to have that than not enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think with your kids, you just always, uh, you kind of pick your battles, you know, you'll see as, mm-hmm. as he moves along and, you know, as he keeps going, uh, what you'll want to put energy into and what you'll just be like too fucking exhausted to really give a shit about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like nervous to ask about like artificial sweeteners. I was even like, that's a question I don't really want to know the answer to, but in my head I'm thinking like, well, maybe it, here, it, it won't. Here. Yeah. Maybe if, if I don't think it causes any kind of cavities, but maybe it will cause some kind of microbiome issue or something. And so I was like, ah, that, that's just one of those battles I'll choose to ignore, but no, nah, it was fine. I'm glad he well, they are, signed off on they it. They are colored, you know, so there's dyes in them and mm-hmm. there's other things in them, but mm-hmm. it depends <laughs> on how far you want, how far you want to take all that shit, you know? <laughs> 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 in the end you end up not being able to drink or eat anything yeah <laughs> like, Fucking like, insane, like, <laughs> one thing i like that he said a lot is uh <laughs> he just said you know put an effort towards something uh no matter how small the effort is i thought that was pretty pretty cool because he's yeah. like you know if you have these things that you feel like you can't control or you can't do anything about he was like just do one you know just that doesn't matter how small the thing is for you know you uh changing your health or you uh changing your diet maybe it just starts with uh one meal you know maybe you have one meal every day that you can that you think is healthy and that's where you start the other ones are still shitty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh that uh, one kind of small thing and just have that be repeatable if you can do that over time maybe you can get into more of it and then maybe you end up being a fitness freak like some of us mm-hmm. This episode is my sign to start getting back into. I floss every now and mm-hmm. then, but I am such a lazy bastard when it comes to flossing, man. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's one of those habits. I, I kind of need like a reward, you know. Like when I floss, like I'm saying, like I don't really see anything, so I'm mm-hmm. always like, I don't, I don't even know why I bother doing it, but yeah. I do it pretty often. But I'm like, Good. I want to, I want to see a big chunk of like steak on there or something. <laughs> like I want to feel like I got something yeah. out of there, even though it's fucking disgusting. But yeah, <laughs> my my teeth are so fucked up that when I do floss, I will see a lot of stuff coming out into the sink because okay. I I water floss every day. I can't go a day without it. Yeah. yeah. Um. When I do miss. I miss a day for travel or whatever. And then I do it the next day and it's just like, Oh my God, I can't believe that was in my teeth. Like it, it freaks me the fuck out. I'm just like, Oh, I hope I didn't have bad breath or whatever, but not it, it. I, yeah, like I said, I can't go a day without water flossing. You ever put it on your butt? Uh, no, that's the bidet. Oh. I, and I do that every day as well. Mm, several times a day. Water floss in the butt. I don't know. Mm. Just thought butt it would water work. floss. Mm. You have a bidet? New product. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It doesn't warm up like um uh, mm. like, like yours, but does it work good? Yeah. The uh the pressures have you tested amazing. it? <laughs> what what's no. which which brand? Is it the Tushy? Uh no, it's not Tushy. It um I got it in the middle of like all this shit going down last year, so um I'll have to look it up. It's from Amazon. It's a, have you a tested prevalent. It? <laughs> <laughs> so I no, because there, there's no dryer. Oh. so it's just water and then oh. i'd have to sit there for a while to let it air dry 
but there has been oh so you have to wipe anyway yeah yeah no and then what happens when you wipe so plenty of evidence there that shows it is very very effective oh okay there we go go. that's what we're looking for yeah yeah so even though the the tissue is going to be i got kind of tense there for a second i didn't know what you're going to say i'm glad i'm glad we built up the anticipation (laughs) but no like the uh, the 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 toilet paper will get you have to kind of use a a thick you know amount because you don't want to it tears off and you yeah. don't want to just be playing with your with your butt. Uh, or but, or. Yeah, I know. I know it's a good excuse. Another uh, benefit of having a bidet. But yeah, that, that wet toilet paper will be really clean. Sometimes it's not. And then I just do another little spritzer and clean it right huh? out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, spritzer. But I, I use it like a straight up colonic though. Did you have a spritzer mm. on your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm tell a. Uh oh. Should I tell the mouthwash story? Or sh- yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, what? I don't even. That would have been good for the. Story. That would have been good for the d- dentist. Uh-oh. I didn't want him to hear it. He'd be like, "These people are savages." Imagine the people that come on the show trying to share like they're like, "Oh yeah, I was on this podcast," and people are like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> they're like, "We listen to that podcast, and uh, we recommend you remove yourself with from any association with them." So after I got these Luminu products, actually, I've thrown away Listerine. But in the past, I've used Listerine as my main mouthwash. Mm-hmm. Now, if you guys use Listerine, you know that when you put Listerine in your mouth, it's spicy. Mm-hmm. It, it burns. It yeah. burns your mouth. You can't hold it in your mouth for very long. You can't. Right? So you spit it out, right? Well, um, you know, I, in, in my past relationship, um, I used Listerine one day before going to bed. <gasps> and, well, you know, before oh. going to bed, also... You know, was gonna have some action. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. freshly clean mouth, minty, fresh, spicy. Mm. I'm like, hmm, okay. Uh, uh, for and then, but and without realizing, I didn't think that. Wow, wait, this spicy what was that noise. For- wait, you work on your you work on your vocal. <laughs> 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 like, yes, I do. <laughs> oh. But I didn't Good. realize that the spiciness was also going to transfer <laughs> to <laughs> said individual. Mm-hmm. So after about forty-five seconds, it was like <laughs> she was like, "Wait, what? 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 What's going on? <laughs> why? Why is this burning?" I'm like, "Hmm, oh, it's the listerine." I didn't realize. Like, whoops! <laughs> and the speed <laughs> she uh. got up to have to shower and be so like, "Ah." Oh, it was oh, like no. I was so sorry, but at the same time, I was like, "This is kind of funny." <laughs> <laughs> that, at that point, you definitely need a detachable shower head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that was kind of funny. Learned never to use mm-hmm. Listerine. Before. It doesn't say anything about that on the bottle. It d- I feel like it should. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it really should. It should yeah, have it a, a should. picture with the Ghostbusters symbol through yeah, it. You know? Don't. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do that. that. Don't do this. Out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a you know like you know we think about um the the microbiome a lot and like anti uh what is microbial like, See, not anti microbial <laughs> antiseptic the medication antibiotics right like they're not good yes. for your gut like right, overdoing yeah. that and you have good bacteria all over so listerine and all these other mouthwashes they're destroying that too mm-hmm. so it's it's this was a really eye opening episode in terms of our dental health I'm excited man mm-hmm. I'm I really used excited to, I used to think that. Like mouthwash wasn't working unless it burned the shit out of your mouth. Me too. And I remember in high school, I would like go home for lunch, brush my teeth. And then because we're idiots and this shows how smart I was, um, my a friend of mine and, and I, we would, you know, do a shot of, um, not take, drink a shot, but we would take Listerine and then we just start walking back to school and see who could hold it the longest. Oh God. <laughs> It, it gets to a certain point where it just it numbs everything and it doesn't hurt anymore. So then you just like, oh, I give up and you just spit it out. I've yeah, never it, let it get there yeah, before. Just, That's it, some savagery. You guys were well, mad. you're competing against each other. Yeah, no, we but. weren't. We're <laughs> idiots. I just know I could never do that. That's hurt. That hurts too much. Nah, you, should, you get over it. Oh. Were you able to salvage that moment or no? <laughs> nah, it was done. Nah, <laughs> it was done. <laughs> it was done. So Listerine <laughs> fucks up a lot of things for yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was that was KO for the night. <laughs> Take us on out of here, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Uh, if you learned some cool stuff, uh, make sure you hit that like button and share this with somebody. Um, and Seema's going to share it with his mama, so maybe you guys can do the same. Well, not with his 
with yours. You get what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow the podcast at Mark Wells Power Project on Instagram at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. My Instagram and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z and Sima. Where are you at? And Sima In Young on Instagram and YouTube and Sima Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Or Mark, ladies, I just want to apologize in advance. We're always trying to figure out a way to to make things back <laughs> on track towards us being able to salvage a situation. No matter how horrible the thing's going, you know, it's like, you're like, uh, so, um, uh, okay, I guess I'll just stay here. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but no way. maybe uh, <laughs> the girl's mind is already gone. Like, she's already, like, moved on to, like, 17 other things that she, she wants to do the next My day or whatever. Burns. But, there's, but yeah. there's, like, no smooth way to start that conversation yeah. back up again, though. I know. Hey, you ever so, seen uh, like in public when couples are fighting? Oh, I've seen. I, it, sometimes I see that, and I'm like, man, this guy just needs to shut up. He's like fucking everything up. Like, yeah. he should at least get some, and then maybe get into a fight later on. I don't know. <laughs> I'm at Mark Spelling Bell. Strength is never weak. This week, this never strength. Catch you guys later. <laughs>